Meadow Ridge's Haunting. The Children Time Forgot. The Paranormal Chronicles Chapter 1. Whispers in the wind, the sun hung low in the sky, casting long shadows across the picturesque town of Meadow Ridge. Birds chirped, and a gentle breeze rustled the leaves of the ancient willow trees that lined the town's central park. Children laughed and played, their innocent games a stark contrast to the dark history that lurked beneath the town's serene facade. Suddenly, a hush fell over the park. The children, who had been running and playing just moments before, now stood still, their heads tilted, listening intently. The wind carried with it soft, melodic whispers, barely audible but unmistakably there. Did you hear that? Young Lucy asked, her eyes wide with a mix of fear and curiosity. It's just the wind. Her friend Jake replied, trying to sound braver than he felt. Come on, let's go play by the swings. But Lucy wasn't convinced. It sounded like voices, she whispered, her gaze fixed on the largest of the willow trees. The other children, too, seemed entranced, drawn to the trees as if by some unseen force. They gathered around listening, their faces a mix of wonder and apprehension. Nearby, parents chatted, oblivious to the strange behavior of their children. When one mother finally noticed, she laughed it off. Kids and their wild imaginations, she said, shaking her head. But not everyone was so dismissive. Mr. Gray, the town's local historian and a man of advanced years, watched the scene unfold with a growing sense of unease. He had seen this before, many years ago, and the memories sent a chill down his spine. Approaching the group of children, he knelt beside Lucy. What did you hear, child? He asked, his voice gentle but firm. Lucy hesitated, then whispered, it said, remember. Mr. Gray's face paled. He recalled the old tales, passed down through generations, of spirits that dwelled within the willow trees. Legends spoke of a time when the trees whispered ancient secrets to those who would listen. But those were just stories, weren't they? Standing up, Mr. Gray scanned the park, his gaze settling on the largest willow. Its branches swayed, even though there was no wind. A sense of foreboding washed over him. He knew he had to act, to delve into the town's archives and uncover the truth behind the whispers. The safety of Meadow Ridge and its children depended on it. As the sun set, casting the town in a soft, golden glow, the children slowly returned to their games, the whispers forgotten. But for Mr. Gray, the journey had just begun. The past, it seemed, was not content to remain buried, and the secrets of the willow trees were about to be revealed. Chapter 2 Wanda's first lesson The sun was beginning to set, casting a golden hue over Meadow Ridge. The children, as if drawn by an invisible force, began to gather around the town's largest willow tree. Its branches swayed gently even though there was no breeze. The ground around it seemed softer, almost sacred. Look! exclaimed young Tom, pointing towards the base of the tree. It's Wanda's home. The other children nodded in agreement, their eyes wide with a mix of fear and fascination. They sat down in a circle around the tree, their attention focused on its gnarled roots and the shadows that danced beneath. From the depths of the tree, a soft, melodic voice began to sing. The tune was hauntingly beautiful, echoing with the weight of centuries. As the voice sang, the children felt a compulsion to join in. Soon, the air was filled with their innocent voices, singing the ancient song of time. Across the street, 
Mrs. Thompson, a mother of two, looked out of her window. She saw the children sitting around the willow, their lips moving in unison. They've come up with a new game, she thought, smiling to herself. She could hear the faint hum of their song, but she dismissed it as just another childhood tune. However, in his study filled with dusty books and old records, Mr. Gray sat upright. The distant hum of the song reached his ears, and he felt a shiver run down his spine. He quickly rummaged through his collection, pulling out an old vinyl record. The label was faded, but he could make out the words, Ancient Melodies of Meadow Ridge. He placed the record on the turntable, and as the needle touched the vinyl, the same haunting tune filled the room. It was unmistakable. The song the children were singing was on this record, a melody that was said to be centuries old. Meanwhile, Lucy, a vibrant girl with golden curls, felt a strange sensation as she sang. With each verse, she felt more tired, more drained. Her once rosy cheeks turned pale, and lines began to form on her forehead. The other children were too engrossed in the song to notice, but Lucy felt as if she was being pulled into the depths of time itself. As the song reached its climax, Lucy's voice wavered. She felt weak, her vision blurred, and she collapsed. The sudden break in the song snapped the other children out of their trance. They rushed to Lucy's side, their faces filled with concern. Tom, tears in his eyes, cried out, Someone, help. Something's wrong with Lucy. Hearing the commotion, parents from nearby houses rushed out. Mrs. Thompson, seeing her daughter on the ground, screamed in horror. What have you done to my child? The children, panic evident in their eyes, tried to explain about Wanda and the song, but their words were dismissed as wild imagination. Mr. Gray, having heard the cries, hurried to the scene. He took one look at Lucy and knew. The song, the ancient melody, had taken its toll. He whispered to himself, the legends were true. As night fell on Meadow Ridge, the town was filled with whispers of Wanda's first lesson and the price that Lucy had paid. The once serene town was now on the edge, its residents fearful of what the next day would bring. Chapter 3 The town's denial, the morning sun shone brightly over Meadow Ridge, but a heavy cloud of tension hung in the air. Parents whispered among themselves, casting furtive glances at the willow trees. The events of the previous evening were the talk of the town, but many chose to believe it was just a freak incident, a result of children playing too close to dusk. Lucy's condition, however, was undeniable. Her once radiant face now bore the wrinkles of someone thrice her age. She lay in her bed, her breathing shallow, her golden curls now streaked with gray. Jake, Lucy's best friend since they were toddlers, sat by her bedside, holding her frail hand. Tears streamed down his face as he remembered their shared laughter, their adventures, and their dreams. He couldn't, wouldn't, accept this as Lucy's fate. I promise, Lucy, he whispered, I'll find a way to help you. As Jake left Lucy's home, he was approached by Mr. Gray. The old historian looked even more worn out than usual, his eyes reflecting a deep sadness. Jake, he began, I believe I have information that might help Lucy. Jake's eyes lit up with hope. Tell me everything. Mr. Gray led Jake to his study a room filled with ancient books, manuscripts, and records. He pulled out a dusty, leather-bound diary from a hidden drawer. This, he said, belonged to my great-grandmother. She too spoke of the willows and a spirit named Wanda. 
Jake carefully opened the diary. The pages were yellowed with age, the ink faded, but the words were legible. As he read, he came across entries that spoke of children singing by the willows, of rapid aging, and of the town's desperate attempts to find a solution. Towards the end of the diary, a particular entry caught Jake's attention. The spirit of Wanda is not malevolent, but she is bound by an ancient curse. She seeks to share her knowledge, but the curse takes a toll on those who listen. I've heard whispers of a riddle, one that can reverse the effects. But time is short, and I fear I may not find the answer. Jake looked up at Mr. Gray, hope evident in his eyes. This riddle, do you know of it? Mr. Gray nodded slowly. I've come across mentions of it in other records, but the exact words elude me. However, I believe that if we can find and solve this riddle, we might be able to save Lucy and the other children. The two of them spent hours poring over the diary and other documents, searching for any clue about the riddle. As night approached, Jake stumbled upon a folded piece of paper tucked between the pages of the diary. He carefully unfolded it, revealing a cryptic verse. In the shadow of time, where the willows weep, seek the spirit's rhyme, in a slumber deep. Reverse the song, and the curse shall wane, but get it wrong, and forever remain. This must be it! exclaimed Jake. Mr. Gray studied the verse, his brow furrowed in concentration. It's not going to be easy, Jake. This riddle is steeped in mystery, and the stakes are high. Jake clenched his fists, determination burning in his eyes. I have to try, for Lucy and for all the children of Meadowridge. As the two of them delved deeper into the mystery of Wanda and the riddle, the town of Meadowridge continued in its state of denial. Parents kept their children away from the willows, but the haunting melody of the Song of Time could still be heard, carried by the wind. The stage was set for a battle against time, with the fate of Meadowridge's children hanging in the balance. Meadowridge's haunting. The children time forgot. The Paranormal Chronicles Chapter 4. The search begins the first light of dawn painted the horizon as Jake and Mr. Gray stood at the edge of the willow grove. The riddle, with its cryptic verses, weighed heavily on their minds. They knew that every moment counted, especially as whispers spread about more children showing signs of rapid aging. We need to decipher this riddle, and quickly, Jake said, determination evident in his voice. Mr. Gray nodded, pulling out a map of Meadowridge. There are old landmarks, places steeped in history and lore. We should start there. As they began their search, word spread throughout Meadowridge about their quest. While some parents, desperate for a solution, offered quiet words of encouragement, many townsfolk were skeptical. Whispers turned into murmurs, and soon enough, there were outright confrontations. Chasing fairy tales while our children suffer. Mrs. Baxter, a prominent figure in the community, exclaimed one day, confronting them in the town square. Jake, trying to keep his composure, replied, We're doing everything we can. If there's even a sliver of hope, shouldn't we pursue it? But as days turned into nights and more children began to age, the skepticism grew louder. Despair hung in the air, thick and palpable. One evening, as Jake and Mr. Gray were poring over old manuscripts in the historian's study, a soft melody wafted in through the open window. It was different from the Song of Time, more rhythmic and eerily enchanting. Jake felt an inexplicable urge to follow it. Drawn to the source, he found himself back at the Willow Grove. The moonlight revealed children, including those who hadn't aged, 
moving in synchronized steps, performing what looked like a ritualistic dance. Their shadows, elongated and distorted, seemed to dance independently, creating a mesmerizing spectacle. Jake realized this was the second secret, the dance of shadows. As the dance reached its crescendo, a shadowy figure, taller and more defined than the rest, appeared near the largest willow. It stood still, watching the children, its form constantly shifting, like smoke being molded by the wind. Jake, hiding behind a tree, tried to get a closer look. The figure seemed familiar, yet he couldn't place where he'd seen it. As the dance concluded, the figure retreated, disappearing into the darkness. Rushing back to Mr. Gray's home, Jake relayed everything he'd witnessed. The historian's face turned grave. The dance of shadows, he murmured, is said to be a way to communicate with the spirits of the land. But it's not to be taken lightly. The shadowy figure you saw might be a guardian of the willows or something far more sinister. The two of them spent the night researching the dance, trying to understand its significance and how it connected to the riddle. As dawn approached, they had a breakthrough. The dance is a key, Mr. Gray said, excitement in his voice. It's a way to unlock the answers we seek. But we need to be careful. The shadowy figure is a wild card. We don't know its intentions. Jake nodded, his resolve stronger than ever. We have to try. For Lucy, for all the children. And so, with the riddle in one hand and the newfound knowledge of the dance of shadows in the other, their search took on a new direction. But the shadowy figure, with its enigmatic presence, added another layer of mystery to the unfolding events in Meadowridge. Chapter 5 The Shadow's Identity The following evening, Jake and Mr. Gray returned to the Willow Grove, armed with knowledge and a determination to uncover the truth. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the familiar dance of shadows began. The children moved in harmony, their silhouettes weaving an intricate tapestry against the backdrop of the moonlit night. From the depths of the shadows emerged the enigmatic figure. It moved with grace, its form constantly shifting, until it finally settled near the largest willow. As Jake squinted to get a clearer view, the figure began to solidify, taking on a more human appearance. To Jake's astonishment, the shadowy figure transformed into a woman, her features etched with years of sorrow. Her eyes, deep and haunting, locked onto Jake's. Mrs. Alara? Jake whispered, recognizing the face from old photographs in the town's archives. The woman nodded, her voice soft yet filled with pain. Yes, young man. It is I. Mr. Gray stepped forward, his face a mix of shock and recognition. But. You disappeared decades ago. The town thought you'd left after. After your child. Mrs. Alara's eyes welled up with tears. My child was taken by Wanda's curse. I tried to save him, to understand the song and the dance. But I was too late. In my grief, I became one with the shadows, forever bound to this grove. Jake, sympathy evident in his eyes, approached her. We're trying to save the children, Mrs. Alara. To break the curse. She looked at him, her gaze piercing. You cannot confront Wanda directly. She is bound by forces older and more powerful than you can imagine. But. She added, reaching into the folds of her dress, this might help. She handed Jake a small talisman, its surface etched with intricate symbols that seemed to glow faintly. It's been in my family for generations. It's said to protect the bearer from ancient curses. 
Jake took the talisman, feeling its weight and warmth. Thank you, Mrs. Alara. We won't let your sacrifice be in vain. As the night deepened, Mr. Gray and Jake returned to the historian's study. Laying out all the information they'd gathered, they began to see a pattern. The song and the dance, Mr. Gray mused, they're not just random rituals. They're interconnected. Jake looked at him, curiosity peaked. How? Mr. Gray spread out old manuscripts, pointing to specific verses and illustrations. The song is a call, an invitation to the spirits. The dance, on the other hand, is a form of communication, a way to interact with these spirits. Jake thought back to the children dancing, their shadows moving independently. So, the children are trying to communicate with Wanda? Mr. Gray nodded. Precisely. But there's more. The dance also serves as a protective barrier, keeping the more malevolent spirits at bay. Without the dance, the song alone could unleash forces we cannot comprehend. Jake clutched the talisman, realization dawning on him. We need to teach the children the true purpose of the dance, to protect them from the curse. Mr. Gray smiled, admiration evident in his eyes. Exactly, Jake. With the talisman and the knowledge we have, we might just stand a chance. As the first light of dawn broke, Meadowridge remained oblivious to the discoveries of the night. But for Jake and Mr. Gray, the path ahead was clearer, albeit fraught with danger and uncertainty. The pieces of the puzzle were coming together, but the true challenge lay ahead. Chapter 6 Wanda's warning the evening was unusually still as Jake approached the largest willow tree, the talisman from Mrs. Alara securely around his neck. Taking a deep breath, he began to hum the Song of Time, hoping to summon Wanda. As the last note faded, a gentle breeze rustled the leaves, and Wanda's ethereal form materialized before him. Her appearance was both mesmerizing and melancholic, a reflection of timeless beauty and endless sorrow. Why? Jake demanded, his voice firm. Why are you doing this to the children? Wanda's eyes, deep pools of ancient knowledge, met his. I never intended harm, she began, her voice a haunting whisper. I am bound, just as they are by a curse far older than the willows of Meadowridge. Jake, taken aback, replied, But the song, the dance, the aging. Why? Wanda sighed, the weight of centuries evident in her demeanor. The song is my call, my plea for release. The dance, a way for the spirits of this land to communicate. But the curse, the curse ensures that those who hear my song pay a price. Jake clenched his fists, frustration building. Then how do we break this curse? How do we save the children? Wanda looked at him, sadness in her eyes. The curse is not mine to break. But I must warn you, young one, there is a greater danger lurking. One that even I fear. As if on cue, the sky darkened unnaturally. The setting sun, which should have painted the horizon in shades of orange and pink, reversed its course, rising instead of setting. The town of Meadowridge was cast in an eerie twilight. Objects, defying gravity, began to float. Chairs, tables, even small animals. Panic ensued as townsfolk rushed out of their homes, witnessing the impossible. Children, drawn by an unseen force, began to converge at the willow grove, their faces pale, their voices singing the haunting melody. Jake, realizing the gravity of the situation, made a decision. Wanda, I need your help. 
We have to gather the children, confront this curse, and put an end to it. Wanda nodded, her form shimmering with determination. Very well. But remember, the true enemy is not me, but the darkness that binds us all. Together, Jake and Wanda rallied the children, forming a protective circle around the largest willow. The talisman around Jake's neck glowed brightly, its light piercing the unnatural darkness. As the children sang and danced, Jake, with Wanda by his side, prepared for the final confrontation. The fate of Meadowridge and its children hung in the balance, and the night was far from over. Chapter 7 The Dance of Shadows The moon hung low in the sky, casting an eerie glow over the willow grove. The children, with Jake and Wanda at the center, began the Dance of Shadows. Their movements, synchronized and fluid, created a mesmerizing spectacle as their shadows danced independently, weaving an intricate pattern on the ground. As the dance reached its climax, a sudden gust of wind blew through the grove, extinguishing all sources of light. The children's voices faltered, but they continued to dance, driven by a force beyond their understanding. From the depths of the shadows, a chilling laughter echoed, sending shivers down the spines of all present. The ground trembled, and from the base of the largest willow, a dark, malevolent force emerged. It took the form of a man, his features twisted in rage and malice. Wanda, the figure sneered, his voice dripping with contempt. Did you really think a mere dance could break the curse I placed upon you? Wanda's ethereal form shimmered with fear. Alden, she whispered, her voice trembling. Jake stepped forward the talisman around his neck glowing brighter than ever. Who are you? What do you want? Alden turned his gaze to Jake, his eyes cold and unfeeling. I am Alden, the one who cursed Wanda centuries ago. She betrayed me, and for that, she was bound to the willows, forever to sing her song of sorrow. Wanda, gathering her strength, spoke up. I did not betray you, Alden. I refuse to join you in your dark pursuits. You sought power at any cost, even if it meant sacrificing innocent souls. Alden's laughter rang out again, chilling to the bone. And look where that got you. Bound, helpless, and now, with these children as my pawns, I will unleash darkness upon this land. As he spoke, the sky darkened further, and an oppressive weight settled over Meadowridge. The town, already reeling from the unnatural phenomena, was plunged into three days of darkness. Time seemed to stand still, the air thick with despair. Jake, realizing the gravity of the situation, clutched the talisman. Its glow provided a beacon of hope in the overwhelming darkness. We won't let you win, Alden. This town, these children, they're under our protection. Alden sneered, his form growing larger and more menacing. You think that trinket can stop me? I am power incarnate. Wanda, her form glowing with a light that rivaled the talismans, stepped forward. Jake is not alone. Together, we will fight you and break the curse once and for all. The stage was set for a battle of epic proportions. On one side, the malevolent spirit Alden, fueled by centuries of rage and power. On the other, Jake, Wanda, and the children of Meadowridge, armed with the talisman and a determination to protect their town. As the three days of darkness continued, the battle raged on, with the fate of Meadowridge hanging in the balance. Chapter 8 Alden's reign The once serene town of Meadowridge was now under the oppressive rule of Alden. The streets, 
usually bustling with activity, were eerily silent. Homes that once echoed with laughter and warmth now stood cold and desolate. Alden's power was palpable, a dark cloud that hung over every corner, every alley. One by one, the parents of Meadowridge were put into a deep, unending slumber. Their bodies lay motionless, trapped in a dreamless state, while their souls remained prisoners to Alden's will. The children, their voices silenced, were rounded up and confined to the town square, where Alden could keep a watchful eye on them. However, Jake, thanks to the protective power of the talisman, remained untouched by Alden's dark magic. He moved stealthily through the town, avoiding detection, searching for a way to free Meadowridge from Alden's grasp. In his quest for answers, Jake sought out Mr. Gray, hoping the historian's vast knowledge could provide some insight into Alden's history. Hidden away in a secret chamber beneath his study, Mr. Gray had managed to evade Alden's notice. Mr. Gray, Jake began, his voice urgent, we need to understand who Alden is, why he's doing this. Mr. Gray, his face lined with worry, nodded. Alden's feud with Wanda goes back centuries. They were once close, bound by love and a shared quest for knowledge. But as time went on, Alden's thirst for power grew insatiable. He delved into dark arts, seeking to control the very fabric of time and space. Wanda, horrified by Alden's descent into darkness, tried to stop him. In a confrontation that shook the very foundations of Meadowridge, she managed to bind him to the shadows, limiting his influence. But Alden, in a final act of vengeance, cursed Wanda, trapping her spirit within the willows. Jake, taking in the information, asked, but why return now? Why after all these years? Mr. Gray, rummaging through his manuscripts, pulled out an ancient scroll. There's a prophecy, he began, one that speaks of Alden's return. It says that when the song of time is sung and the dance of shadows is performed, the one bound in darkness shall rise, seeking to claim what was once lost. Jake's eyes widened in realization. The children, their song and dance, they unknowingly set Alden free. Mr. Gray nodded gravely. Yes, and now we must find a way to bind him once more. The prophecy speaks of a hero, one who bears a glowing talisman, who will stand against the darkness. Jake clutched the talisman, its glow brightening at the mention of the prophecy. Then we must prepare. Alden may have taken control of Meadowridge, but we won't let him keep it. As the two of them delved deeper into the prophecy, searching for clues and a way to defeat Alden, the town remained under his dark reign. But hope was not lost. With the talisman's power and the knowledge of the prophecy, Jake and Mr. Gray were determined to free Meadowridge and put an end to Alden's reign of terror. Chapter 9 The prophecy's clue the ancient scroll lay spread out on Mr. Gray's study table, its edges frayed with age. The prophecy written in an elegant script, spoke of a hero, a child untouched by time, who would rise against the darkness. Jake, reading the words, felt a chill run down his spine. He looked at his reflection in a nearby mirror. While the children of Meadowridge had aged rapidly, he remained unchanged, his youthful features a stark contrast to the weariness in his eyes. It's you, Jake, Mr. Gray said, his voice filled with a mix of awe and concern. The prophecy speaks of you. Jake took a deep breath, trying to process the revelation. What must I do? Mr. Gray pointed to the subsequent verses. 
The prophecy speaks of trials, challenges that the hero must overcome to unlock the power needed to defeat the darkness. Without hesitation, Jake set forth on the path laid out by the prophecy. The first trial required him to face his deepest fears. As he ventured into the heart of the willow grove, the surroundings morphed, and he found himself standing on the edge of a vast, bottomless abyss. The fear of the unknown, of what lay beyond, gripped him. But with sheer determination, he took a leap of faith, only to find himself safely on the other side, the abyss merely an illusion. The second trial delved into his past regrets. Visions of missed opportunities, lost friendships, and moments of doubt played out before him. Tears streamed down Jake's face as he confronted each regret, seeking forgiveness and finding closure. As Jake emerged from the trials, stronger and more resolute, Alden's grip on Meadowridge tightened. Sensing the threat Jake posed, Alden unleashed his dark minions to hunt him down. Mrs. Alara, her shadowy form gliding effortlessly, intercepted the minions. Go! Jake, she called out, her voice echoing through the grove. I will hold them off. With a heavy heart, Jake watched as Mrs. Alara, using the last of her strength, created a barrier, sacrificing herself to buy him time. The final trial awaited. As Jake ventured deeper into the grove, he came upon a clearing where the moonlight illuminated an ancient stone altar. Inscribed on it were symbols and verses, the final secret, a spell of binding. Jake, with the talisman glowing brightly around his neck, began to recite the spell. The words, though foreign, flowed effortlessly their power resonating with the very core of his being. As the final word left his lips, a blinding light enveloped the grove. The spell of binding, combined with the power of the talisman, created a force field, pushing back the darkness and weakening Alden's hold on Meadowridge. The battle was far from over, but Jake, armed with newfound knowledge and strength, was ready to confront Alden and free Meadowridge from his reign of terror. The prophecy had set him on this path, and he was determined to see it through to the end. Chapter 10 Preparing for battle the dawn's early light filtered through the trees of Meadowridge, casting long shadows on the ground. The town, though still under Alden's dark influence, showed signs of resistance. Whispers of hope and rebellion echoed through the streets as Jake, armed with the song, the dance, and the spell, began his preparations. Gathering the children in the town square, Jake stood before them, the weight of responsibility evident in his eyes. We have a chance, he began, his voice firm and resolute, a chance to free Meadowridge, to break Alden's curse. He taught the children the spell of binding, ensuring each one understood its significance and power. Their voices, filled with determination, recited the spell in unison, the words resonating with an energy that seemed to push back the darkness. Mr. Gray, after hours of poring over the town's records, made a significant discovery. There's an old ritual circle, he exclaimed showing Jake an ancient map. It's located on the outskirts of Meadowridge, a place of power where the veil between our world and the spirit realm is thin. Realizing the importance of the location, Jake and Mr. Gray, along with the children, made their way to the ritual circle. The stones, worn by time, still held an aura of mysticism. The circle, with its intricate patterns and symbols, would serve as the battleground for the final confrontation. As they began their preparations, a familiar ethereal presence made itself known. Wanda, her form shimmering with a soft glow, approached Jake. 
I want to help, she said, her voice filled with remorse. I want to make amends for the pain I've caused. Jake, looking into her eyes, saw genuine regret. We need all the help we can get, he replied, extending a hand in friendship. Together, they set up the ritual circle, each stone charged with the combined energies of the song, the dance, and the spell. The children, standing at equidistant points, began to sing the song of time, their voices rising in a haunting melody that seemed to pierce the very fabric of reality. Wanda, joining them, added her voice to the chorus, the power of her spirit amplifying the song's effect. The ritual circle began to glow, its light pushing back the encroaching darkness. As night fell, the stage was set. Jake, standing at the circle's center, the talisman around his neck glowing brightly, looked out at the gathered forces. Tonight, he declared, we take back Meadowridge. Tonight, we break the curse. With Wanda by his side and the children's voices filling the air, Jake prepared for the battle that would determine the fate of Meadowridge. The darkness loomed, but hope, stronger than ever, burned brightly in the hearts of all present. Chapter 11 The Battle of Wills The Ritual Circle, bathed in the soft glow of the moonlight, became the epicenter of a battle that would be remembered for generations. As the children's voices rose in unison, singing the song of time, the very air around them crackled with energy. The ground trembled, and from the shadows, Alden emerged, his form more menacing than ever. A fierce spiritual battle ensued. The children, their voices unwavering, channeled the power of the dance and the spell, creating a barrier that kept Alden at bay. But Alden, fueled by centuries of rage and power, retaliated with dark tendrils of energy, attempting to break through the barrier. Jake, standing at the forefront, used the talisman's power to shield the children. Each time Alden's energy struck the talisman, it glowed brighter, repelling the attack. But with each assault, tiny cracks began to form on the talisman's surface, a sign that its power was waning. In the midst of the battle, Wanda stepped forward, her ethereal form radiating a light that contrasted starkly with Alden's darkness. Alden, she called out, her voice filled with a mix of sorrow and determination. It's time to end this. Alden, momentarily taken aback, sneered. You think you can stop me, Wanda? After all these years? Wanda, her gaze unwavering, replied, We were once bound by love, Alden. But your quest for power tore us apart. I refused to join you in your dark pursuits, and in your anger, you cursed me. But I am not the enemy. The darkness that consumed you, that turned your heart cold, that is the true enemy. Alden, his eyes filled with a mix of rage and pain, roared, You betrayed me, Wanda. And for that, you will pay. In a swift move, Alden summoned a dark vortex, capturing Lucy within its grasp. The young girl, her face pale with fear, was held suspended in the air, her life force slowly being drained. Jake, witnessing the horror, felt a surge of anger and desperation. The talisman, sensing his emotions, glowed even brighter, but the cracks continued to spread. Alden, his voice dripping with malice, presented Jake with an impossible choice. Save the girl or save the town. The choice is yours. Jake, torn between the two, looked around. The children, their faces etched with fear, looked to him for guidance. Wanda, her form flickering, whispered, Choose with your heart, Jake. Taking a deep breath, 
Jake made his decision. Channeling all the energy from the talisman, he directed it towards Alden, creating a blinding beam of light that pushed the dark spirit back. At the same time, he reached out with his free hand, pulling Lucy from the vortex and into his embrace. The ritual circle, supercharged with the combined energies of the song, the dance, the spell, and the talisman, erupted in a burst of light, enveloping Alden and weakening his hold on Meadowridge. As the dust settled, the town slowly returned to its serene state. The children, exhausted but safe, rejoiced in their victory. Lucy, her strength returning, hugged Jake tightly, gratitude evident in her eyes. Wanda, her form now stable, approached Jake. You made the right choice, she said, a hint of a smile playing on her lips. The darkness is repelled, but the battle is far from over. Jake, the weight of the talisman now light around his neck, nodded. We're ready, Wanda. Whatever comes next, we'll face it together. The battle of wills was over, but the war for Meadowridge's soul had just begun. Chapter 12 Wanda's sacrifice The aftermath of the battle left Meadowridge in a state of eerie calm. The ritual circle, once glowing with energy, now lay dormant. The children, their faces pale and eyes filled with a mix of relief and sorrow, gathered around Jake and Lucy. Wanda, her ethereal form flickering like a candle in the wind, approached the duo. Her eyes, filled with a deep sadness, met Jake's. There's only one way to ensure Alden never returns, she whispered, her voice barely audible. Lucy, sensing the gravity of the situation, clutched Jake's hand. What must be done? She asked, her voice trembling. Wanda took a deep, shuddering breath. I must merge with a living soul, become one with it. Only then can we harness the power needed to bind Alden once and for all. Jake's eyes widened in realization. You mean? Wanda nodded, tears forming in her eyes. Lucy, will you help me? Lucy, after a moment's hesitation, nodded. If it means saving Meadowridge, I'll do it. With a heavy heart, Wanda began the merging process. A soft glow enveloped the two, their forms becoming one. As the light faded, Lucy stood alone, her eyes now a deep shade of blue a testament to Wanda's presence within her. The transformation weakened Alden, his form becoming less defined, his power waning. Seizing the opportunity, Jake rallied the children. Now's our chance, he declared, determination evident in his voice. We must bind Alden once and for all. With Lucy at the forefront, the children began reciting the spell of binding. Their voices, filled with hope and resolve, rose in unison, creating a barrier that trapped Alden within. As the final word left their lips, a blinding light enveloped the ritual circle. Alden, his form disintegrating, let out a final, anguished scream before being bound once more, his reign of terror finally at an end. Meadowridge, free from Alden's grasp, slowly returned to its serene state. The sun shone brightly, casting a warm glow over the town. The children, exhausted but triumphant, rejoiced in their victory. However, the willow trees, once a symbol of hope and mystery, began to wither away. Their leaves turned brown, their branches drooping a stark reminder of the sacrifices made. The parents, awakening from their deep slumber, looked around in confusion. To them, it was as if they had merely taken a nap, with no memory of Alden's reign or the battle that had taken place. Jake, 
watching the town return to normal, felt a mix of relief and sorrow. Wanda's sacrifice had saved Meadowridge, but the cost had been high. Lucy, with Wanda's spirit now a part of her, approached Jake. We did it, she said, a hint of a smile playing on her lips. Jake nodded, tears forming in his eyes. Yes, we did. But we must never forget the sacrifices made. As the two of them walked hand in hand, the town of Meadowridge began to rebuild, its residents coming together in a show of unity and resilience. The battle was over, but the memories would live on, a testament to the power of love, sacrifice, and the human spirit. Chapter 13 The Aftermath The sun rose over Meadowridge, casting a golden hue over the town. But the usual morning bustle was replaced by a somber stillness. The townsfolk, though relieved by the end of Alden's reign, were weighed down by the gravity of Wanda's sacrifice. A makeshift memorial was set up near the Willow Grove, where residents came to pay their respects. Flowers, candles, and handwritten notes adorned the site, each a testament to the love and gratitude the town felt for Wanda. Her ethereal presence, though no longer visible, was felt by all, a gentle reminder of the price of freedom. Jake and Lucy, having played pivotal roles in the battle, found themselves at the center of the town's admiration. Their bond, forged in the crucible of adversity and strengthened by Wanda's merging with Lucy, was evident to all. They were inseparable their shared experiences creating a connection that transcended the ordinary. Mr. Gray, realizing the importance of documenting the events, set up a small workspace in his study. With meticulous detail, he began chronicling the battle, the sacrifices, and the lessons learned. Future generations must know of the bravery and resilience of Meadowridge, he often remarked, his pen flying across the pages. The children, once trapped in a state of rapid aging, began to show signs of returning to their actual ages. Day by day, the premature wrinkles and gray hairs faded, replaced by the youthful exuberance that had been stolen from them. Parents, overwhelmed with relief, held their children close, grateful for the second chance they had been given. And then, a miracle. The withered willows, which had stood as silent witnesses to the battle, began to sprout anew. Fresh green leaves emerged, followed by strong, healthy branches. The transformation was rapid, and within days, the willow grove was restored to its former glory. The townsfolk, seeing the rejuvenated willows, took it as a sign. Hope they realized, was never truly lost. Even in the darkest of times, when all seemed lost, hope had a way of finding its way back. Jake, standing beside Lucy, looked out at the willow grove, a sense of peace washing over him. Wanda may be gone, he whispered, but her spirit lives on. In the willows, in the town, and in our hearts. Lucy her eyes glistening with tears, nodded. She gave us a second chance, and we must make the most of it. As the two of them walked hand in hand, the town of Meadowridge began to heal. The memories of the battle, though painful, served as a reminder of the strength and resilience of the human spirit. And with each passing day, the town grew stronger its residents united in their determination to build a brighter future. Chapter 14 The New Guardian The days following the battle saw Meadowridge slowly returning to its peaceful rhythm. Children's laughter echoed through the streets, and the townsfolk went about their daily routines with a renewed sense of gratitude. However, for Jake, the aftermath brought with it a new responsibility. One evening, as he sat by the window, 
the talisman around his neck began to glow. Its luminescence pulsed in a rhythmic pattern, drawing Jake into a trance-like state. Visions of ancient guardians, each bearing a similar talisman, flashed before his eyes. The message was clear. The talisman had chosen Jake as Meadowridge's new guardian. Awakening from the trance, Jake felt an overwhelming sense of duty. He realized that the talisman's power was not just for protection but also for guidance. With determination, he began his training, seeking guidance from the spirit realm. Ethereal mentors, spirits of past guardians, appeared to him in dreams and visions, imparting wisdom and teaching him the ways of the guardian. Lucy, having merged with Wanda, began to exhibit signs of possessing her powers. She found herself able to communicate with the spirit realm, her senses heightened, and her intuition sharper than ever. Together, Jake and Lucy formed a formidable duo, their combined strengths making them the perfect protectors of Meadowridge. As the weeks went by, the two of them honed their skills, preparing for any future threats. They patrolled the town, ensuring that the protective barriers remained strong. The townsfolk, seeing their dedication, felt a renewed sense of security, knowing that Jake and Lucy were watching over them. To celebrate the town's resilience and to honor Wanda's sacrifice, the town council decided to hold a festival. The streets of Meadowridge were adorned with colorful banners and fairy lights, and stalls offering delicacies and crafts lined the pathways. Musicians played lively tunes, and children danced with joy. The highlight of the festival was a ceremony held in the town square. Jake and Lucy, standing side by side, were honored for their bravery and dedication. The mayor presented them with medals of valor, and the townsfolk cheered, their voices filled with gratitude and admiration. As the sun set, a large bonfire was lit, its flames reaching high into the night sky. The townsfolk gathered around, singing songs and sharing stories of the battle and the heroes who had saved them. Jake and Lucy, hand in hand, looked out at the sea of faces, their hearts filled with pride and love. The festival, a testament to Meadowridge's indomitable spirit, went on late into the night. And as the first rays of dawn broke over the horizon, the townsfolk returned to their homes, their hearts lighter and their spirits renewed. For Jake and Lucy, the festival marked the beginning of a new chapter. As the new guardian and protector of Meadowridge, they were determined to ensure that the town remained safe, its legacy preserved for generations to come. Chapter 15 Epilogue A new beginning years had passed since the fateful battle that had forever changed the course of Meadowridge's history. The town, once on the brink of destruction, now flourished with life and prosperity. The streets, lined with bustling shops and cafes, echoed with the laughter and chatter of its residents. Children ran through the meadows, their innocent games a stark contrast to the dark times that had once befallen the town. Tales of the heroes of Meadowridge were passed down from generation to generation. Grandparents narrated stories of Jake and Luce's bravery, of Wanda's sacrifice, and of the resilience of the townsfolk. These tales, filled with lessons of courage, hope, and love, became an integral part of Meadowridge's legacy. Jake and Lucy, though they had aged gracefully, remained the town's vigilant protectors. Their bond, forged in the fires of adversity, had only grown stronger over the years. They often sat on the porch of their home, watching over Meadowridge, their hearts filled with pride and contentment. The talisman, now a symbol of their guardianship, hung by the doorway, 
its gentle glow a constant reminder of their duty. The willow trees, once withered and dying, now stood tall and majestic. Their lush green canopies provided shade to the townsfolk, and their strong branches swayed gently in the breeze. They had become a symbol of hope and resilience, a testament to Meadowridge's ability to rise from the ashes. Children played around the willow trees, their laughter echoing through the grove. The whispers that had once drawn them into a world of mystery and danger were now silent. Instead, the trees stood as silent guardians, watching over the town with a sense of benevolence. As the sun began to set, casting a golden hue over Meadowridge, a familiar silhouette appeared near the willow grove. Wanda, her ethereal form shimmering in the soft light, looked out at the town she had once called home. Her face, once filled with sorrow and pain, now bore a smile of contentment. She had found peace, her spirit finally free from the chains of the past. Jake, sensing her presence, walked over to the grove. Standing beside Wanda, he looked out at the town, his heart filled with gratitude. Thank you, he whispered, his voice filled with emotion. Wanda, turning to face him, replied, it was my duty, Jake. And now, it's if you have enjoyed our paranormal haunting scary story. Please visit us at Paranormal Untold Stories. Come to listen to more of our scary stories collection. Paranormal Untold Stories encourages you to contact us if you have your own untold story that you would like our professional team to put online as a scary story. Thank you. Please follow our YouTube channel, Paranormal, Untold Stories, and encourage others to do the same. Paranormal, Untold Stories